Good afternoon. My name is Ahmed Kovacic um, from City University in London, and uh, I'm in a Fluid Machinery uh, Board Group. Fluid Machinery Bo Board Group is organizing this seminar, which is today on the future of microgas turbine technology. The seminar will be presented by Professor Abdul Nasser Saima, uh, who is a professor of uh, energy engineering at City University of London and the interim dean of our school uh, of uh, mathematics, computer science, and uh, engineering. Professor Saima was a professor of computational fluid dynamics prior to coming to City University, and it was at the University of Sussex from 2006 to 2012. Before that, he was a senior lecturer of computational mechanics at Brunel University from 2005 to 2006 and a research fellow, uh, and a senior research fellow, and a principal uh, research fellow at Imperial College from 1994 to 2005. Uh, he also held the title of Rolls-Royce Research Fellow at Imperial College from 2002 to, to, to 2005. He obtained his PhD in computational fluid dynamics from the University of Manchester in 1994, uh, an MSc in en Energy Technology for Developing Countries from the University of Salford in 1991, and a BSc in Mechanical Engineering from Birzeit University in Palestine in 1987. His uh, current research focus is on distributed power generation using microgas turbines and organic ranking cycles, thermal energy storage, and concentrated solar power. He has worked on large gas turbines of power generation and jet propulsion, uh, publishing work in aerodynamics and uh, aeroelasticity uh, of compressors and turbines, uh, as well as the general issues of aerodynamics of gas turbine components and external aerodynamics on aircraft. So I will now pass uh, to a presentation from Professor Saima, after which we will have some uh, Q&A session. Hello, everyone. My name is Abdul Nasser Saima. I am a professor of energy engineering at City University of London. Uh, I will be presenting today about the future of microgas turbine technology. There is a wide range of topics uh, uh, in this talk. Uh, and with the limited time, I have chosen to focus on uh, these topics. Uh, I will first give a general description of the microgas turbine systems with some perspective on the uh, relative history or the relatively short history of these systems. I will then provide an overview of the architecture of microgas turbines and the main components and design aspects. Uh, subsequently, I will move to some technical features that distinguish these machines from other machines providing similar power range. Uh, after that, I will go into more detail on the applications for these machines and the range of products in the market with some examples. And finally, I will uh, conclude with some remarks. So what is a micro gas turbine? It's a heat engine uh, which has a continuous flow as opposed to the uh, heat engines like in, uh, reciprocating engines, which have pulsating flow, uh, and uh, it provides either shaft power or can be used for propulsion or electricity generation. Uh, this requires conceptually simple component designs. Uh, these are the compressor, a turbine that are both mounted on a single shaft and some heat addition unit. It is similar in architecture to propulsion engines that we may all know, as well as large power generation plants using gas that we call them nowadays gas power plants. For example, you can see in the middle right uh, picture the 300 megawatt Siemens gas turbine that are used in combined cycle power plants. There is no general agreement currently on the size that can distinguish a micro gas turbine from a normal gas turbine. In the past, many people designated anything below one megawatt as a microgas turbine. Some now designated 
to anything less hundred than 100 kilowatts. Uh, but sometimes uh, they use that for sometimes these things in between. Uh, however, uh, more people nowadays refer to anything to 100 kilowatt to few hundred kilowatt as small gas turbines, sometimes even in the uh, lower megawatt range. So, uh, how does uh, the gas turbine work? As I said earlier, it is a continuous flow machine where air pressure is increased in the compressor. Uh, typically, uh, for micro gas turbine, is a centrifugal compressor. Heat is then added uh, either in a combustion chamber, in a heat exchanger, or in some application nowadays via concentrated solar power in a receiver. Hot gases are then admitted to the turbine where they are expanded to provide shaft power. The compressor is driven by part of this shaft power, and then either the electricity generator uh, is used to or be driven by the power, or you can use this, for example, to to provide a, a propulsion through a fan or other forms of propulsion. Turbines are typically, again, in microgas turbines, are of the radial inflow type. Sometimes, nowadays, people may use axial turbines. Because of, of the relatively low pressure ratio compared to large gas turbines, hot gases leaving the turbine are at higher temperatures than the gases exiting the compressor. This provides an opportunity for what we call recuperation or regeneration, where you can use that heat to preheat the working fluid before it enters the combustor, hence reducing the thermal energy input and increasing the efficiency of the machine. And uh, this happens because we are required here to burn, for example, less fuel for the same power output. So microgas turbines follow the Brayton thermodynamic cycle, as shown uh, on the right in its symbol ideal form on a temperature entropy diagram. For those who do not know the concept of entropy, think of it as the, in, the, in this context as being increased by adding heat to the system. It is also associated with the heat generated in components due, for example, to friction or irreversibilities. The compression process increases the pressure and temperature, moving from the isobar 1, 4 on the diagram to the higher pressure isobar 2, 3. Uh, heat is added at constant pressure between points 2 and 3, and then expansion happens in the turbine between points 3 and 4. Microgas turbines operate an open cycle where gases are ejected to ambient at point four. Uh, in closed cycle systems, we require to have a heat exchanger to cool the working fluid and bringing the gases from the temperature at point four to the temperature at point one on the TS diagram or the temperature entropy diagram. In here, I will give some historic perspective of MGTs. The development of microgas turbine started in the late 1980s. This was driven by the automotive industry searching for an alternative to the reciprocating diesel and gasoline engines, or what we call them internal combustion engines. This drive was due to the advantages of microgas turbines regarding low emissions, fuel flexibility, and the potential to compete in, on cost with internal combustion engines. With the use of high-speed generators in the 1990s, instead of a mechanical drive, the technology became suitable for hybrid vehicles. However, at that time, the hybrid electric drivetrain was not sufficiently mature technology and did not raise further interest. Instead, the technology was picked up by the decentralized power generation market, where its long life and low maintenance cost make it uh, compete on uh, cost and capital for uh, these type of uh, uh, applications, uh, especially uh, uh, for the medium power range, say above 30 kilowatt. Uh, progress has been slow, however, and varied from country to country, but it looks like it's picking up momentum now particularly due to interest 
in reducing nitric oxides or NOx emissions. So now I will uh, give some of the basic features of the design of microgas turbines, uh, uh, we, where we get a bit of more detail here. So at the center of the slide, you can see a cutout through a simple micro turbine showing the main mechanical arrangements and components. The design process uh, starts typically with the thermodynamic cycle analysis and optimization, which follows a known specification given, say, by the application or the customer or for a given duty. Uh, this eventually, after uh, a number of iterations, uh, defines the mass flow rates uh, of the air and fuel, uh, the pressures and temperatures at the various points in the cycle, which are usually at the entry and exit of each component, thus allowing the start of the aerothermal design of these components. The compressor, turbine, and heat addition unit, aerodynamic design as well, uh, uh, are undertaken at this stage uh, where the flow path is defined uh, through the compressor and turbine, allowing also for the rotational speed and blade shapes to be determined. Uh, this as well allows for, for example, the entry and exit to the turbine and compressor, typically on volutes, to be designed. Parallel to that process, uh, mechanical design takes place, uh, and it is an iterative process with the aerothermal design. Uh, and at this stage as well, a shaft bearing arrangement needs to be designed, uh, and some rotor dynamic analysis, as you can see to the bottom right corner, need to take place to ensure that all the vibration mode are out of the operating range, uh, to ensure vibration-free systems or low vibration during the startup and the shutdown. This also includes the high-speed generator, which typically sits on the shaft and needs to be considered during the rotodynamic uh, analysis of the system. Not to forget as well that the bearing system needs to be uh, defined. Many machines still use uh, lubricated arrangements with their journal bearings or roller bearings, uh, but some now are increasingly using air bearings and some people are considering the use of magnetic bearings in particular for the larger uh, uh, units, or what we call small gas turbines. Uh, uh, as well as this, recuperator specifications happened during the design process, and it's again an iterative process with the thermodynamic cycle, because the specifications of the recuperator in terms of pressure loss and effectiveness affect the design of the cycle itself. Uh, the, as I said, the design process is iterative, so there is uh, going forward and backward between components until a satisfactory design between all the components in it is achieved uh, and some adjustments are made during this process to some component uh, specifications. It is also important to undertake the design of the electrical and electronic system. That includes the electrical drive, which is used for starting up the system, a rectifier and an inverter to feed the electricity generated from the system into the grid, as well as the control system. Uh, and on top of that, uh, we need to uh, specify places and types of sensors that need to be installed on the system, uh, both for providing information for the control system, as well as for monitoring the operation and optimization of the operation of the device. So what are the technical features that distinguish these machines from other combustion engines? Uh, particularly, the main competitor here, as we know, is the reciprocating engines. Uh, because microgas turbines are small, they have small parts count, so they are compact and, in principle, are more reliable with less downtime and less, uh, if you like, breakdown uh, uh, in, in operation. They are more compact, as I said, uh, and thus providing higher energy density, also facilitated by the presence of a high-speed generator, which is very small because it rotates at a very high speed. Uh, in addition, these machines uh, are more fuel flexible. They allow a variety of fuel types and calorific values more than uh, IC engines to be used, 
uh, and they can use as well external heat sources or they can be used with concentrated solar power. Uh, nitric oxide emissions is a major feature of these systems, is typically uh, in the orders of, uh, uh, if you like, less than 10 parts per million, uh, uh, as opposed to about at least 10 times that for reciprocating engines. Additionally, the main no uh, source noise uh, in these engines, which is the combustion noise, it's easily attenuated by installing upstream and downstream uh, noise attenuating devices, uh, uh, but also they have no low frequency vibrations of the order that is encountered in IC engines because of the reciprocating nature of those engines. Uh, when used in combined heat and power mode, these machines uh, can provide flexible ratio between the electricity and power demand. For example, if, uh, if the heat demand is higher, you can, for example, remove the recuperator. So the electrical efficiency is lower, but you get more heat out of the system. And that is a more flexible approach than uh, the competing reciprocating engines. Uh, they are also suitable for integration with fuel cells if high electrical efficiency is required, in particular, what we call them a solid oxide fuel cell, which require high pressure and high temperature to operate them. Now, moving to the main applications of microgas turbine systems. As mentioned earlier, the main driver for recent increase in the use of uh, combined heat and power systems is the presence of microgas turbines. Uh, also, they are used for combined heat, power, and cooling. Uh, this applies for relatively large domestic scale as well as small industrial applications. Uh, I'm talking here for things above uh, 30 kilowatt uh, electrical demand. Uh, interest in the use uh, as automotive range extenders uh, for electric vehicles uh, have gained traction recently with the uh, uh, increased demand on electric vehicles and the increased demand that they should be driving longer distances than permissible by a single charge of the batteries. Uh, there is as well interest now in implementing them uh, in larger uh, transport vehicles, uh, vehicles that used to transport goods uh, between uh, say cities where batteries cannot take these very long. Uh, there's some interest as well even for use these things to replace diesel trains with hybrid electric uh, trains. Uh, They're increasingly used as well in oil and gas industry, uh, particularly uh, to uh, burn the flared gas rather than allowing it into atmosphere which is currently as well in some location banned. So there is actually a mandatory, uh, uh, if you like, uh, need for using machines to use this gas for other purposes. Currently, uh, as we will see uh, later in this presentation, they are being developed as well for distributed concentrated solar power. Uh, they are suitable for uh, uh, small scale propulsion applications like small scale UAVs or unmanned air vehicles. Not to forget the use uh, for backup power uh, and emergency use. Although uh, the high capital cost compared to reciprocating engines, uh, uh, at least until now, makes them only suitable when space is uh, at a premium. Uh, now we have uh, understood the basic features of these machines and their design, we will move into uh, their market. Uh, in here, I'm not here making a comprehensive picture of the market. It's rather more indicative and shows the main machines available. So to start with, I will uh, uh, say the main uh, three market players at the moment, the largest of which is Capstan, uh, which started with the, three uh, the two machines, C30, uh, 30 means uh, 30 kilowatt electric, uh, and C65. And recently, they have introduced the C200. Uh, uh, as I said, this is uh, uh, the largest player at the moment. It's a California-based company uh, and has many applications nowadays in Europe uh, and in the UK. Uh, the next one is uh, Onsaldo Energia. They have a single size machine, uh, which is the AE100. Uh, this machine actually was originally developed by Terbeck, which was a spin-out from Volvo in uh, Sweden. Uh, but this has been bought several years ago by Onsaldo Energia in Italy. Uh, the third available machine in the market is the 250 kilowatt MT 
uh, uh, 250 from Ingersoll Rand. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, and through my contacts with industry, I know that there are a number of uh, products that are uh, about to enter the market. They're really approaching very quickly. Uh, and the first of which, which is a very interesting machine that I will talk a, lot, a little bit about it uh, in a later slide, is the Aurelia 400. Uh, Aurelia is a, a company based in Finland. Uh, and then the MTT uh, Intertwin uh, uh, machine, that's a very small 3 kilowatt uh, uh, machine for combined heat and power. MTT is based in the Netherlands. Uh, in the UK, Summit Power uh, have produced uh, the uh, Turbo Green Boiler, which is uh, an electrical power of 2 kilowatt electric. And there is the NSS uh, uh, larger machine, 280 kilowatt. Uh, and again, uh, uh, through uh, uh, knowledge with, with industry, uh, there are few in the pipelines coming at a later stage, uh, including the Aurelia 1000, the Blade on Jets in the UK, which is a 12 kilowatt engine. And we are at City University in the process of uh, getting close to market to micro turbines, a 6 kilowatt engine that has been already demonstrated, as we will see and a 10 kilowatt engine that is in the uh, process of if you like completing construction and testing. So uh, moving into the market applications, uh, uh, the, the uh, market applications are varied, but I'll focus on few here. Uh, the starting, for example, for the power uh, only applications and the capstan engine here is the, an example rather than a, uh, if you like, a general uh, uh, feature. Uh, here, the C30 and C65 have three possible modes of generation uh, operation modes. Uh, to the left, you can see they can be used as a base load. Uh, and in this case, they will be operating at a constant uh, uh, power output, uh, which means that you can maximize the overall efficiency of the system over the period because it will operate at its maximum efficiency point. Uh, they can be used as well as load following uh, in a similar way as large gas turbines used in the grid. Uh, additionally, the potential use uh, as time of use whenever they need it. So you switch them on, you operate them as needed, and then switch them off when there is no need uh, as there is a utility power available from other sources as shown in the picture on the right-hand side. Some more about the capstan machines. Uh, uh, so there is the C200 that I mentioned, which you can see it on the left-hand side of the picture, and the C1000 on the right-hand side. Uh, some of the features of the C200, uh, which is also similar, in fact, to the design of the C30 and C35 capstan engines, uh, are shown in the graph. It shows that uh, there is an annular combustion chamber and uh, an annular recuperator surrounding the main uh, uh, shaft containing the compressor turbine and the high-speed generator. One of the advantages of this arrangement, it uh, makes for a very compact system uh, and very symmetric system. However, uh, it has the disadvantage that it's uh, very difficult uh, to maintain if there's something happened in the internal parts. Uh, and it's very difficult to adapt. For example, if you want to change the combustor for a different type of fuel, you'll have to change almost the entire engine. Uh, now, the compactness and the shape of it provides for a modular nature, and you can see the C1000 on the right actually is not a completely new machine. It's an arrangement where our five C200 are installed one beside the each, the each other, and they all can feed into one exhaust unit to, for example, raise steam or provide combined heat and power in a boiler. This slide uh, basically shows how the capstan uh, machines are used in a combined heat and power. This is just for illustration. So you can see the machine here with the shaft coming out of it, uh, driving a generator, uh, and then the exhaust gas is going into a waste heat recovery generating unit and then you have some uh, flue gases passing through some filtration unit. Uh, and also you can use a downstream uh, uh, heat remaining as well to provide, for example, hot water, etc. So you can have multiple 
use for these engines. Let's now talk about uh, the combined heat and power market uh, uh, for 30 kilowatt uh, to few hundred kilowatt type engines. Uh, this is currently actually the, largest, the largest market available, uh, particularly in US and Germany and Japan. Uh, the UK market has been slow in taking these up, uh, but it is currently emerging, in particular uh, uh, customers using this now, for example, in gyms to provide uh, uh, electricity and heat for swimming pools and for cooling the, uh, the gym, for example. And uh, they can be used as well in, in care homes, in uh, small hospitals, etc. Uh, microgas turbines have high potential, though, in this case, and that's why we can see that there is an, there's a, uh, 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 probably a growth imminently coming due to their low NOx emissions, as I mentioned earlier, particularly if uh, legislation comes along, which is expected to restrict the NOx emissions from uh, uh, gen generating engine, particularly within inner cities, which put a significant restriction on the use of reciprocating engines unless they put a post-treatment expensive equipment. Now, moving to the, uh, uh, the example of the Aurelia machine, which is a, a very interesting one. Uh, it's a 400 kilowatt electric engine. Uh, it has a different uh, design philosophy from the capstan engines. Uh, it, it is made of components designed separately and integrated in a frame. This allows for two interesting features. The first one is the use of best available technology from the market rather than designing it yourself. Uh, uh, for example, magnetic bearings are sourced externally, combustion chambers are uh, is sourced externally and is interchangeable. Uh, if you want to change the type of fuel used, you can just bring another combustor and easily replace the existing combustor. Uh, and because of its, uh, if you like, uh, loose arrangement, uh, it's much easier uh, uh, to access for maintenance. However, the downside of this arrangement, the machine is large. In fact, it's larger than uh, uh, equivalent power reciprocating engines. Uh, uh, one of the other interesting features of this machine, because it uses an intercooled compressor technology, its efficiency is rather high for small gas turbines. It reaches above 40% efficiency compared to around 32% for typical small gas turbines in the market. The other end of the spectrum, at the lower end, is the micro uh, CHP for domestic application. Uh, uh, and these are two examples rather than comprehensive picture. Uh, these are known to me well because I have contact with both companies. Uh, so the, uh, on the left is the Intertwin MTT machine. Uh, and as I mentioned, MTT is a Netherlands-based company. And to the right is the Samad Turbo Green Boiler. Uh, both designed, uh, uh, rather than being called as a micro gas turbine, they try to call them as, a, if you like, a, a, a domestic boiler or power generating boiler, which is designed basically to alleviate the fear of customers from the name of a micro gas turbine. Uh, the uh, size of the market really is still very small if it exists. Uh, uh, there is some penetration in the market very slow in Germany and the Netherlands, but uh, in the UK, uh, uh, it just there are some field trials, but it is, isn't such for this type of machines uh, a market as yet. Uh, but the size can grow and can benefit from feed-in tariffs, because at this size of machines, you can have a feed-in tariff for feeding electricity on the grid. Uh, uh, and uh, these units have more potential for expansion uh, in uh, outside Europe as well. So this is uh, basically my views uh, of why so far the uh, micro CHP systems have not gained traction in the market, uh, 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 due to a number of challenges. Uh, and the first is uh, capital cost um, com uh, combined with the uh, lack of knowledge of the technology from potential domestic customers make it difficult to understand uh, uh, the value of this technology in terms of energy savings, and the short payback period. 
This is actually compounded by the fact that there is no history of installations of these machines to show people and show how much they saved or what's the benefits to them. Uh, the other challenges that they have is uh, the match between heat uh, and power demand for many domestic applications is not ideal. Uh, this, however, can be alleviated by a suitable feed-in tariff to the grid uh, or by thermal storage. Uh, but the thermal storage means that you have to have additional capital cost and use of space, which again can make it difficult to convince customers with the use of this technology. Uh, so the question is that, do we have the right business model to advance this technology in the market? Uh, uh, is the uh, notion of direct replacement for uh, existing boilers a uh, right one, or we need a different way of financing and pushing this technology in the market? So these uh, 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 questions are still outstanding and require uh, innovative ways of, of, if you like, introducing the technology into the market. Uh, the other thing is that does the current energy policy framework support domestic scale CHP when it's burning fossil fuels? Uh, and how can we get uh, effective supply installation and maintenance chain for a technology that's going to grow slowly at the beginning? So these are the questions that probably uh, will be asked by any uh, uh, investor or company who want to take these forward. Uh, now I'll talk about uh, the developments that uh, we have been working on in the last five years at City University of London. We have developed uh, two micro gas turbines, uh, or I call them micro turbines because they don't use gas. Um, uh, the first one is a six kilowatt electric engine. Uh, which has been already completed, uh, tested uh, in Italy, as uh, you will show in a minute. And the second one is a 10 kilowatt electric, which uh, uh, has a completed design, manufacture, and is undergoing assembly and uh, testing very shortly. Uh, so this uh, slide shows you how we use the first uh, engine. So we use that in a concentrated solar uh, uh, system using a parabolic dish uh, that was installed in Casaccia in uh, Italy, outside Rome, at the site of the Italian research agency, INEA. And the way it operates is you have uh, an arm uh, at the center of the dish, which actually tracks the sun in two directions. Uh, and the micro turbine, with all its auxiliary systems sitting in a box uh, uh, at the focal point, and air is heated using a receiver uh, at that focal point uh, to replace the combustion system. So the actual uh, system has successfully been demonstrated uh, uh, in uh, the later part of 2017. So this slide uh, shows you actually how this uh, uh, solar-powered uh, microturbine works. It's pretty the same as the standard micro turbine, the only thing that we are replacing here is the combustion chamber is replaced by a solar receiver, which is sitting at the focal point of the dish. So actually, uh, some people would think that we are raising steam. We are not here. We are heating the working fluid, which is air, directly using the sun. Uh, uh, there are, of course, certain features that had to be adjusted compared to the standard micro turbine. For example, we don't have here a control over the thermal input. So it cannot be used as a control parameter in the controller. Uh, uh, instead, we use other innovative techniques to control the machine and optimize its operation. Finally, and before I close, I will uh, just uh, alert you to the uh, existence of the new, uh, newly found, I would say newly found because it's been for about a year or so, the European Micro Gas Turbine Forum, which we have established uh, uh, and we have held the first conference at City University of London uh, uh, last year, and the plan is to hold the next event, uh, 26th and 27th of November, in Madrid uh, at the, the site of a company called Ultran. And the purpose of this uh, initiative is to foster the commercial deployment of micro turbines by setting the scenario where all stakeholders can, if you like, share knowledge, collaborate, and discuss the roadmap uh, to move the technology forward faster than it would happen without such, a, if you like, a co coordinated activity. So to conclude, 
uh, this talk. Uh, uh, I'm going to sum just up the ideas. Uh, these are mainly my own, uh, if you like, remarks about the, the micro gas turbine. And I believe that the market has started growing, uh, and we are expected, expecting that this growth would accelerate in the coming years. Uh, uh, existing uh, uh, manufacturers in the market seem to believe that bigger machines uh, uh, can uh, uh, provide more profit margins and hence focusing their current development uh, on these machines. We are talking about here machines in the order of hundreds of kilowatts to about a megawatt. Uh, micro turbine market, however, especially for CHP, uh, still stuttering uh, and requires uh, uh, a number of innovative ideas to, to, to uh, make it materialize. Uh, we believe it has a potential, uh, uh, but uh, is still yet uh, to be seen. Uh, there is a gap in the market for machines in the range of 10 to 20 kilowatts, uh, uh, and uh, we have, as you see, in developing machines in that range, and we're trying uh, to take these machines towards combined heat and power applications. Uh, uh, the changing legislation uh, regarding particularly NOx emissions may, may provide uh, a significant boost to the technology moving forward. And with this, uh, uh, I thank you all for listening to me, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Professor Simon. And uh, the floor is now open for questions. Uh, you can ask a question by pressing the button uh, below the slides that uh, were presented. And um, uh, please uh, feel free to, uh, to ask any questions at this moment. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I would like to ask first question, if Professor Simon allows me. And uh, the question would be, uh, you outlined very nicely challenges that uh, uh, this technology is facing at the moment. And you outlined that uh, there is a forum uh, which has been uh, uh, set up to address these challenges. So what are the, uh, the first uh, views or the first steps that that forum will be taking to actually address these challenges and put machinery into into place to be used a little bit more. Uh, uh, thank you, Ahmed, uh, for uh, for the introduction as well and uh, for this question. Yeah, the the second forum uh, that is being held uh, uh, in the next well the week after next will be focusing on the uh, uh, the if you like the business side of things, uh, the intellectual property protection, because most of the companies that uh, uh, deal with this industry are small companies and there is apprehension about sharing knowledge, sharing information. Uh, but it will deal as well with uh, 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 looking at uh, uh, business models uh, that can suit the system. Uh, uh, on top of that, we are actually looking at some successful case studies so we can learn from them and see whether, uh, uh, if you like, what is successful in some application can be map, mapped onto another application. I hope this, uh, this answers your question. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we have a number of questions now coming in. The question is uh, from Duk Nin Ha, which is about how does micro gas turbine compare to other technologies such as fuel cells? Um, well, in terms of um, uh, um, uh, efficiency, of course, uh, uh, thermodynamic efficiency, the, the micro turbine are, is uh, much lower in efficiency, uh, but the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, cost is a major factor. Uh, uh, the the micro turbine technology uh, is very well known for a while, uh, as opposed to fuel cells, which are still, I believe, struggling with reducing the cost and as well. Uh, as reliability, uh, uh, as, as well the, the materials used, I believe, are still an issue. Uh, the next question is uh, from uh, Patrick Hall, uh, which is, what's the cost per kilowatt uh, uh, installed, and what is the physical size? Uh, 
Uh, well, this, this actually depends on the type. Uh, as I mentioned in the presentation, uh, some machines which are compact, like the capstan, are very small, smaller than the equivalent reciprocating engine, while the Aurelia machine, for example, is larger. So it really depends on, on the size of the machine and it depends on the technology and the design. But the, uh, the majority of these machines are uh, uh, much smaller than reciprocating engine for the same power range. Uh, uh, I would say the cost per, per kilowatt in terms of installed power, again, depends on the size, but the larger machines in the order of 100 kilowatts, you're looking at about 1,000 pounds per kilowatt. Uh, it can go up to about 2,000 pounds per kilowatt if you go in the order of tens of kilowatts. Uh, thank you. Related to the first question uh, is uh, the question from Nigel Bond which is on how does the solar generator compare with solar hydrogen uh, generator? I guess this is just to that application of uh, yeah, solar uh, power utilization. I, I'm not sure what, what, what uh, does the solar hydrogen mean uh, really here. Uh, does that mean that we have an electricity and then it, it uh, if you like, electrolyzes water to hydrogen? Uh, I, I don't know what does it mean, but the, just in simple terms, the solar... Hello. The uh, solar power generator here is just you convert the, the solar energy to thermal power as, as a heat input instead of combustion. Uh, that's in the term of the technology uh, and how it works. Now, in terms of cost, uh, I'm not sure yet uh, uh, what would be the cost in the market because this technology is still under development, but the estimate is... In some fair, favorable areas where there is sufficient uh, uh, normal irradiation, uh, uh, not, not, not certainly in the UK, uh, but in areas of southern Europe, uh, uh, North, North uh, Africa, uh, China, etc., uh, we estimate that this will be uh, uh, competitive with, with photovoltaics. Thank you very much. We hope that this answers Nigel's question. Uh, so the next question. Uh, uh, is from uh, Tony Bates, which is on uh, uh, could you pair uh, a CHD turbine with a heat pump to match electrical demand to heat uh, output? Um, I'm, again, uh, it's not clear to me what does uh, matching to heat pump uh, uh, mean. Does that mean that you use the exhaust gases to upgrade the heat? Uh, uh, the, 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 it's quite... Uh, 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 unclear. If you think about the heat pump uh, 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 raising the temperature of, say, for example, ground heat to make it as an input to the uh, uh, gas turbine, I can see big difficulty in there because the, the, the turbine entry temperature of a typical micro turbine is between 800 and 1000 degrees C. So, so uh, uh, it's quite uh, uh, practically probably too difficult to match them. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, there's a question we have about what are the main fuels uh, used by micro gas turbines. One of, one of the advantages of uh, uh, gas turbines or micro gas turbines is fuel flexibility. Uh, uh, so uh, 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 you can use uh, gas, natural gas, uh, you can use uh, 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 LPG, uh, you can use liquid fuels. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, it can go. Uh, you can go to lower calorific value of fuels. Uh, uh, so it's 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 a wide range. Of course, you cannot use any type of fuel in any micro turbine. You have to have the suitable combustor in there. But the rest of the system would be uh, uh, almost unchanged. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the next question is from uh, Graham McLean. Uh, do you expect there will be a market for microgas turbines as, ra as range expanders for hybrid vehicles? Uh, uh, w this is actually probably one of the highest potential markets. Uh, 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 the reason is you can have them small size, uh, they're compact, and if they are running uh, at a constant uh, power asset, uh, just to charge the battery, they can be running at a high if overall efficiency. Uh, uh, so, so they've got a lot of advantages. There's a lot of research and development projects ongoing now for both smaller cars, but more importantly at the larger vehicles, like, for example, uh, uh, goods transport or uh, 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 hybrid electric trains, small boats. 
so the expectation is that this market is up and coming. Um, if you look into this uh, uh, question from huge grids, are the lower nit nit nitric oxide emissions achieved across all the potential fuels, or will the fuel flexibility be limited by future legisl le legislative values? Uh, the, the, the typical uh, nitric uh, oxide emissions is related actually to the design of the combustor rather than the type of the fuel, uh, um, and uh, uh, because in in uh, in the in a, a combustor of the type used in in gas turbine, unlike the reciprocating engines, you don't get really. Uh, hot spots. Of course, if this is combustor is well designed, uh, because there's a good air fuel mixing, uh, you don't get hot spots, and hence you don't get the nitric oxide emission. So it's related really more to the combustor design rather than the type of fuel used. Thank you. Um, related question, perhaps to some of the previous question is: Has application been considered that there is a intermittent power supply to individual households? like in uh, Africa or other uh, countries. That was from uh, Ibiba, Iroma, uh, from Via. Uh, I assume you mean this is a backup power supply. I, uh, I'm sure this is a, a suitable application uh, for those, uh, of course, uh, 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 it's uh, dependent really on the, the affordability because this would be running for small periods of time. Uh, um, I guess uh, at the current state, economically, it won't really uh, uh, be competing with the very cheap reciprocating engines for this type of application. Thank you. Another uh, question from Paul Taylor, <clears throat> which is related to probably some uh, questions before, is how does the kilowatt hour per square meter of solar collector compare with photovoltaics? Um, it's, uh, uh, we are looking here about uh, 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 using half of the surface area required for the same power output in the concentrated solar power. Uh, so the land use is, is almost half. Okay. Um, there was a question uh, which was uh, uh, from Jason Maser. Uh, what are the luc luc lucrative market or investment opportunities in microgas turbine areas? Uh, I think uh, in the UK, uh, we think uh, a combined heat and power applications, uh, particularly for inner cities, uh, uh, is potentially, I mean, I wouldn't say it is a lucrative, but I think it's potentially lucrative. Uh, we are actually uh, uh, undertaking uh, some pilot projects at the moment to, to, to go into this area to see how uh, 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 it would be suitable for the market. But, uh, but, but uh, 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 I think probably uh, this is more of a question to industry. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Building Energy Manager, uh, Shang Chen, if I... Uh, pr pronounced that properly, uh, says, <coughs> Hi, Professor Saima, do you think the continued ongoing electricity grid decarbonization will have any impact on the emerging micro CHP uh, industry and well established CHP industry and applications? We are just about at the tipping point where the carbon emission of electricity generated by the CHP is about the same as the electricity from the grid. Um, I can see your point here. Uh, however, what the uh, there are two things about uh, uh, that. The first one is uh, distributed generation uh, have a large potential uh, for, of course, more use of heat and power. So you end up with overall efficiency of 70, 80 percent. So definitely, that would reduce the carbon emissions. Uh, but the second, of course, uh, 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 potential here is the use for zero carbon fuels or low carbon uh, emission fuels, such as biofuels, or in the future, uh, uh, fuels uh, uh, produced by electrolyzing water, for example, uh, remotely. So this is a storage of energy from somewhere else uh, 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 generated, for example, of large wind turbines, etc., and using it whenever needed. Uh, 
uh, in a combined heat and power application in inner cities, uh, such as the use of hydrogen or the use of synthetic fuels uh, uh, resulting from co combining carbon dioxide with hydrogen. Thank you very much. Uh, so, market related question as well is, uh, are any of the commercially available or near market micro gas turbines currently able to run on alternative fuels such as biogas? Yes. Have any been demonstrated to do so? That's from uh, Ruth Kemsley. Uh, yes, the, the, they, they are. There is some actually, uh, well, I'm not sure about being demonstrated in the market. Uh, 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 but I give you an example. Capstan uh, heavily use uh, their machines for um, uh, uh, what, what we call it. Uh, uh, well, gas resulting uh, from from um, uh, uh, if you like the um, uh, rubbish collection places. Uh, is a biofuel. Let's call it. So there's a lot of use of micro turbines. So there is a, a demonstration of that, but there's a lot of research work as well on on uh, using other other biofuels that are, if you like, synthetic biofuels that you produce in in uh, uh, from, for example, vegetable oil, etc. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so if uh, we go back to some more technical questions. Uh, 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 from Adil Kuzi Kandatil, I apologize if it's not a proper pronunciation. There are two questions. One is, uh, are we able to do multiple start stop of the gas turbines like recipe engines? And the second question is, uh, how long does it take for a gas turbine to ramp up uh, to fuel power? Uh, well, yeah, it, it, it is uh, uh, very easy to ramp up or multiple start and stop is a very simple. Uh, that the, the uh, uh, probably is only sli marginally slower in terms of ramp up or response to acceleration and deceleration than recipe engines, and that's one of the reasons actually in the early days when m micro turbines were tried in in uh, as a replacement for uh, uh, cars did not work very well because you press the accelerator you get a little bit of delay, but that is a marginal. So for power generation is not really a serious matter. Thank you very much. Uh, more specific to this uh, <coughs> uh, uh, application, solar application, from Hassan Yudi, uh, for the solar M M MGT application, what was the power out output of that dish, and what are the advantages uh, compared to Starling engine design? Okay, the, 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 the one that we uh, uh, demonstrated was basically a trials one. So we, the power output was six kilowatt electric. Uh, and in fact, we started the project uh, because the European Commission wanted to look at alternatives to Stirling engines uh, because of their reliability uh, issues. Uh, they, uh, as you may know, uh, Stirling engines operate uh, by uh, uh, using a, a high pressure uh, working fluid uh, trapped into the engine and, and sealing these is pretty difficult. So there's always leakage and deterioration of performance with time. Uh, uh, so far, as far as I know, these problems still outstanding in Stirling engines. So reliability issues uh, are, are, are the main factor. Thank you very much. Um, we still have a few minutes. So the next question is from Jason Myers. Uh, how to match compressor to turbine unit and MGT for six kilowatt unit? Um, I'm not sure what does that question. How to batch it? I mean, it's, uh, 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 there are design rules uh, 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 for gas turbines similar to micro turbines, and, and uh, uh, I don't think probably there's enough time to talk about the uh, 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 the. Uh, the uh, uh, actual uh, process there, but it's uh, it's not really um, uh, uh, if like something that you can mention a few words. But the, we follow standard design rules really here. Yes, excellent. and I, I would say certainly that uh, contact details of Professor Simon could be found on uh, City University website. And uh, if there are more technical questions, I'm sure that he will be happy to. Uh, respond to them and answer to them. Indeed, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, another question from uh, Patrick Hall. Um, 
how long before major overhaul in hours? Uh, we're talking here in the order of thousands, really. So it's, it doesn't require uh, uh, as uh, many uh, uh, overhauls as a uh, uh, reciprocating engine, and that's one of the main advantages. You can run and run and run for a very long time before you need an overhaul. Uh, excellent. Uh, if anybody from the audience has uh, any other burning, urgent question, uh, please do send them now. Um, there is one question here is, uh, can we get a copy of the slides? Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, Professor Simon will be happy to, to share them, but uh, obviously this is I'm a key seminar, and uh, uh, contacting I'm a key, I'm sure that uh, it yeah. will be possible to get. Uh, this yeah. this question. Well, if I'm a key, if the right with that, I'm happy to send them uh, uh, to anybody who emails me. Excellent. Well, uh, I think we can uh, slowly wrap up uh, in here. Uh, there have been uh, quite a lot of very interesting questions, both technical, market-related, and questions for the future of the technology. Uh, is there anything else, Professor Simon, that you would like finally to say or to convey uh, the message? Well, the, the final thing is just to, to uh, uh, reiterate uh, uh, that we are in uh, 26th and 27th of, of November holding the European Microgas Deban Forum, and the registration is, is on uh, uh, our website, www.emgtf.com. Uh, and there's further information about the speakers, the schedule, etc. So if anybody interested more, you can join us in Madrid. Well, with this, I would like to thank you very much, Professor Simon. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank for you. all of this. And uh, to thank also I'm a key for organizing this uh, very interesting webinar. And uh, I would like to thank you, everybody from the audience, for joining us, for listening to this. Uh, and we hope that... Uh, we can respond to a question uh, to questions if there are any anymore. Thank uh, you, thank you, Ahmed, and thanks for the key as well. Thank you very much, and. Uh,